what he wants to see come out of it is a signed declaration of all those present, but all the countries, I believe it's 54 countries, plus four international organizations, a compact, an agreement on mechanisms and means to ensure nuclear safety, common rules of the game, if you will, that each are pledged to uphold uh, to ensure that nothing happens to these materials, that there's full accountability for them, and that clear measures are taking to ensure nuclear security in the literal sense of the term, that we know where these materials and, and, uh, and technologies are and that they are adequately, fully protected so that they don't get into the hands of others. That, I think, is the leading, the leading goal uh, at, at the summit. I think he is going to get an agreement. Um, most of the evidence indicates that, you know, again, although it will be discussed, uh, it's, I don't want to say it's been pre-negotiated, but this has been a process that's been ongoing over the last uh, couple of years. And you could say that uh, President Obama, very, very early in his presidency, identified nuclear nonproliferation as one of his highest goals in his presidency. So it will be one more significant accomplishment. You could say the accomplishment is more on paper and that much remains to be done. But the fact that not only all of the nuclear weapon states, the officially authorized nuclear weapon states, will be present, but even uh, present as well will be the three nuclear states that have not signed the non-proliferation treaty, specifically Israel, India, and Pakistan. North Korea agreed that it would forego any additional nuclear weapons tests, any additional uh, missile tests, and any further enrichment of uh, uranium at its Yongbyon facility uh, in return for some commitments from the United States, food assistance, a variety of other measures to somewhat reestablish some kind of a working relationship with North Korea. Uh, the problem was, is 16 days later, North Korea then announced that it would launch this satellite, which blatantly contradicts the understandings reached between the U.S. and North Korea, and also, for added measure, directly violates sanctions that the United Nations Security Council, all members, including China and Russia, had imposed on North Korea for its earlier uh, weapons activities. So the Security Council does not accept the distinction that North Korea tries to make between a satellite launch and a missile test since so much of the technology in either is interrelated. Two days ago, North Korea said that if it was elevated to an agenda item, they would deem it the equivalent of a declaration of war. Now, North Korea often makes these kinds of threats, but given that both of their previous nuclear weapons tests followed shortly after efforts to launch missiles, uh, we shouldn't discount the threat. Iran is a different case. We are on the verge of uh, new talks with Iran. Iran is still a member of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, whereas North Korea is the only state ever to withdraw from the Non-Proliferation Treaty. So there's a lot of you know, doubts and wariness about renewed negotiations with North Korea, but North Korea, uh, with Iran rather, but Iran is under a lot of international pressure, efforts to restrict its sales of oil, uh, to make it pay other prices, if you will, uh, for uh, its, uh, its nuclear pursuits. And again, a lot of it's the lack of accountability and our uncertainty about what exactly their goals may be. So the Iranians are hurting, and I would assume that there will be discussion in the context of some of these bilateral meetings, high-level bilateral meetings, about how policies are coordinated in the coming, in the coming period of time.